So I'm assuming that you are new to the game, or maybe not. Maybe you're an advanced player coming back. Maybe you didn't know something, or maybe you're looking to learn something, especially with the new UI that has been adapted into Enlisted. And that is what I'm going to cover today. So Enlisted is a squad management system kind of game. So just like in Battlefield, I'm going to be running around. I'm going to fight other players in a first-person shooter-esque situation, except for this is going to take place in World War II. Now, if you know anything about World War II, then you know that there are different theaters, different campaigns that happened during the war that allowed different sides to either lose or come to victory. And this game has six of those theaters. That of being Moscow, Normandy, Berlin, Tunisia, Stalingrad, and Pacific War. So in each one of these campaigns, you could play as a specific country. So give or take, you could be the Nazis, you could be the Russians, you could be the uh, American allies, you could be the Japanese. So it is really up to you as far as which theater was the most intriguing to you. Or even if the war itself was newer to you and you're just getting a grasp into it, pick one and kind of step forward with that. Now, with the introduction of these, you will have squads. And what do the squads do? So, as a player, I am am in control of a certain selection of troops that I can use to command to cover positions, to blow up tanks, to gather objectives for me. They could do all sorts of things like defend, attack, Um, they could resupply, they could also heal you if you're injured. Um, So there's all really kinds of cool features. So now when I die as the person I'm playing as, I will respawn as another member of my squad and I will show you sort of what I'm talking about here. So if I'm playing as this guy and I die, I will respawn as this guy. And then if he dies, I will respawn as this guy. But if they all die, then my squad is wiped out. And then I will be given another squad. And then so I could respawn as this squad. Each squad has a certain amount of tickets in game. And this is how victories are tracked. So when you're playing through the game, try not to let all of your squad members die. This is very important. Now going into this, you should understand that there is an early early section of the war, late section of war, and um, everything in between. So when picking a campaign, remember to keep that in mind. Do I want to play with more bolt action type rifles or do I want to go extreme and have a lot of explosions and fully automatic weapons and invading Normandy and freeing Normandy? So it's really as far as you want to play the game, it's up to you. If you want to start at the very early section of the war and work your way all the way up to the late or start at the late, and then play around with different parts of the campaign that is completely up to you. So now that you have a little bit of an understanding as to what it exactly is to uh, to play enlisted getting started, we're going to we're going to show you how to operate your squads. So when you first start the game, you should only have about 1, 2 or 3 with a tanker squad. And uh, you know this tanker squad could eventually be changed out for a plane, a tank. It doesn't really matter, but you will always have to have a vehicle squad in your squad sections. So now, typically, this is an infantry-based game. So you will be mostly running around with your soldiers, trying to capture objectives or points or flags, anything to earn points to win the game. Now, in support of this, you will also have vehicles who could support you. Uh, like tanks that could do uh, shelling, and they could take out other tanks, they could take out infantry, they could do all kinds of things. You also have planes that can do bombing runs. You could ping objectives and say, hey, I need a bombing run there. And then you could, as a friendly allied plane, I could, as I'm coming in for a bombing run, I know where to drop my bombs now because you've called it in to me. So vehicles as a, from a support role are very important. Now, how they work are always subject to change as this game is somewhat new and you know everything has sort of changed since this game's release but as this guide is concerned this is with the newest and latest enlisted including the latest ui um so understanding squads so when i first start a squad in any campaign more than likely and i will switch campaigns for you just so you could see um i will have just a basic squad see and then with my my tanker and then my other squads and I will have more than likely just a bolt action rifle now a majority of the game or at least I I don't want to say a majority of the game 
a good portion of the early part of you playing this will be relatively slow as far as unlocking things. So if you want to get into this game and automatically have automatic weapons and the nicest best tanks or the nicest best gear, it's it's just not going to happen unless you want to pay to progress in that form or fashion, which I don't necessarily recommend unless you're looking to specifically support the, the game developers in some form or fashion. Otherwise, I don't recommend it. Okay, so now coming back to it, let's say that you have upgraded a little bit. Uh, or, or, no, let's go back <laughs> and let's say that you haven't. And you're a Russian guy and you want to unlock weapons for your soldier, right? So as you play the campaign, you can see like level 6. So once I reach level 6 in the Moscow campaign, I will now be able to unlock the Mosin. And now I can unlock this and use this Mosin anytime. And I'm going to go back just to show you exactly how this works. So let's say that I'm, I'm the Americans and I'm starting all the way with the Springfield rifle, right? And I'm somewhat upgraded in the campaign now. And I now have the uh, M1 Carbine or the M1 Grand. And so I can now purchase in logistics. So if I go to shop and then if I go to weaponry and then if I go to rifles, once you have it unlocked, of course, in the progressions tab, which we will go over in just a second, you will be able to go back to shop. You will be able to unlock the M1 Grand. You'll be able to purchase the M1 Grand, and just like this, I will come back to my squads, and then I will equip my new M1 Grand. However, you know, whatever new rifle you want to equip. And this will work for any of the weapons in the game as far as your squads are concerned. Now, as you unlock stuff in the campaign or through these progressions tab, and let me go ahead and show you. Uh, and I'll, I might as well use a fresh campaign, uh, for example, right? So if I start off, I will have... Um, nothing unlocked except for my basic rifleman squad and then I'll get my first automatic weapon my PPW or, or my PPD and then I will unlock my second squad well you have the potential to pay for progression right these are paid for squads these help to donate with the support of you know of course the game and all that but as I unlock you could see that I I get more and better weapons so like a double barrel shotgun for example um, and then as I get these weapons I could include them to the squad specific soldier. Squads, you have different type of squads. You have machine gunner squads, right? And these are like the kind of MG gunners, your heavy machine gunner types. You have a radio battalion squad, and these guys can call in artillery strikes, they can call in um, like I was saying earlier with your allied attack bombers, they have the ability to call on an AI version of this, which will just bring in a sweeping bombing run over the objective. They have the ability to call in smokes. Um, you have flame units, which carry flame backpacks and flamethrowers on their backs. So when you're pushing an objective and you want to be a more aggressive player, engineers are very important because they allow your teammates or they allow you to build rallies for your team. What do rallies do? Rallies allow you to set spawn points throughout the battlefield for your team to spawn. It is extremely important that you have at least one engineer in every squad. And now you could set your squads up any kind of way. You could set your squads up, even a rifleman squad, to be an anti-tank squad. Even if it's just a rifleman squad, you could set it up to be a radio battalion. You could set it up to be a mix of different things, right? But I always recommend an engineer in every single squad. And now, second to that, you could have you could have rocket launcher guys like assaulters. You could have basic riflemen like this guy who only carry one rifle. You could have your radio guys. Let me think what else you can have. Uh, you could even have machine gunners in certain units, uh, like this one. So, like, you know, I've got a heavy machine gunner in just my basic radio battalion unit. I've got my engineer, and then I've got my assaulter. My assaulters are like my submachine gun users. These guys are very aggressive. They're not like my riflemen. You know, they're meant to get in the objective and in somebody's face. So, depending on how you want to play, right, you could also set up squads, and I will show you, that are specifically designed just for sniping. You know, I don't even, I, I guess I don't need to, because just imagine, it's a soldier, it's a rifleman, 
but his sole job is for sniping. And so if you want to be a support role, you could have an engineer on your sniping team and you could sit back on a mountainside and supply ammo to yourself, supply a rally point, so a spawn point for your teammates, and then you could cover as your teammates are pushing the objective from the spawn that you set. You could also use this in combination with vehicles. So depending on how you want to play. Um, some of the latest squads are the paratrooper squads. These allow you to jump from a plane and land anywhere on the map that you want. They do require either a paid for progression or in a, a certain event to unlock. So don't necessarily worry about paratroopers. But if you see a bunch of guys falling from the sky, that is what that is. And you should have concerned because they're probably pretty strong. Um, aside from that, you should have a good understanding of what the flame troopers are, what the heavy machine gunner troopers are, what your basic rifleman troopers are, and you could also mix these up. So going into uh, going into upgrades of your squads, right? Okay, so let's say that I do have a squad. I want to have the flame squad. That I'm determined on it. I've seen it. I know what it's like. I know that that's a strong squad, and I need to upgrade it. So with the new UI, a things, couple things have changed, but predominantly they're the same, right? You're gonna start, you're gonna start these with absolutely nothing. So on mine, they're highlighted because I have unlocked them. And uh, up at the top over here, you could see your squad's experience, right? And so for upgrade points, I have one, a 23 out of 23, and I have the one. And this is for a later um, unlock in the game that they haven't added yet. But don't worry about that yet. You should just be level one, or if you're an advanced player, you'll already know this. Um, so starting off with this, you can see over on the right side here that my first thing that I've highlighted will give me 25% plus squad experience. So that should be the first thing that you have to unlock for any one of the squads, really. So if I'm a heavy machine gunner, it should be squad experience. If I'm a flamethrower, it should be squad experience. Same thing applies to if I'm a radio battalion unit. Okay, so let's say I am the Flame Troopers, um, and I have unlocked a second Flame Trooper for my unit, because that is what would be afterwards if you wanted to, and then I increase my squad size. So now I went from a, from a three-person or a four-person four squad to a five-person or a four or five or a six-person squad. So you can increase the size of your squad. And this is important, believe it or not, because the more bots that you have means the more lives that you have, the more people you have on points, the more kills you can get. So it is more important to have a larger team. Some teams are smaller. Some teams are larger. So really play around with what you want to do as far as working with it. Now, now setting up squads, and this is kind of roping back to what I was originally talking about, you could either set your squads up to be very aggressive. So um, I could have a salter, I could have an engineer, and I could have a um, anti-tank guy, right? Or another assaulter, and I could just be very, very assaulty. Uh, or I could have an anti-tank guy, a radio guy, and an assaulter. So really it's up to you on how you want to play your squads. I always recommend at least one engineer, which I have selected here. I recommend personally, and this is just how I play, always one radio operator per squad. Get your radio get your radio operator squad fully upgraded, so that way they have the maximum upgrades, and you can unlock and use them in any other squad, right? I, I do recommend that because they are useful. You can call in artillery strikes on objectives. You could call in artillery strikes on tanks. They're they're very useful, um, you know. And and it's up to you whether or not you would rather have a radio guy over an AT guy normally like that's the choice uh, but that's up to you you know anti-tank guys are very very effective at first the first rocket launcher you're gonna get not so much but over time you'll be able to improve on that so don't worry you will be able to blow them up and I will put maybe a clip or two of me being able to blow up a tank just with basic stuff like explosives so you don't need to worry about having them they just help so now setting up you could either have smokes, molotovs, explosive packs, grenades, white phosphorus, or impact grenades. What do these do? 
So now if I'm running a squad, just like I was setting, saying, setting it up, if I want to be very aggressive, right, I could use things like smokes to block the enemy's view as I push the building. I could use things like molotovs as I push in there, I throw it down. Or defensively, I could use it to block doorways to keep them from pushing in. I could use grenades to clear out rooms. Explosive packs are perfect for dealing with tanks. You just cook it for about three seconds, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, and throw it right on the back of a tank. You're sure to get a kill or two, if not blow the thing up. So keep practicing with that. You'll be able to eventually find where to throw it every time to get that kill. Uh, and then white phosphorus grenades are obviously pretty strong. You throw these, and they are a combination of Molotov and smokes. So those are pretty strong, and impacts as well. You just throw those, and they blow up against the ground. Now, later on, you do get TNT charges, anti-personnel mines, and anti-tank mines. Again, this is all up to you and subjective on how you want to play. I always, I, I personally choose to go with the smoke and TNT charge route. It just, it helps. I could throw a smoke right at a tank, climb on its back, throw, throw a TNT on it, boom, and then, you know, walk away a happy man. So that's totally up to you how you want to play the game. Definitely get a few matches under your belt so you could get a good understanding on what it exactly is that your troops do and what they need. Now, over time, you know, some troops will only start off with one med kit, right? And one med kit means I get shot and I only get one chance to revive myself. Later on, I could unlock with squad upgrades like engineers or riflemen. If I upgrade them, I could get the backpack slot. And so I could have a small backpack, I could have more ammo. I could have extra grenades, for example, and if I put a large backpack on, it gives me four extra chances to survive. And then even if I do get shot, I could heal myself afterwards to stay in the fight longer. This is important, again, subjective, depending on the way that you want to play the game. Um, now, moving on to the next thing that I would like you to understand as far as squads, tanks, vehicles, and everything in between. Vehicles and tanks in this game are pretty difficult. There's a kind of steep learning curve to them. It's going to take some time for you to get used to it. You're going to have to bounce around. So when you're driving a tank, right, you could use the commander, but your guy's going to pop his head out and be vulnerable. So you're going to be able to see the most when you're driving, when you're shooting, and this is good. Sometimes that's good. And then sometimes you could just be the driver. And you could do this normally with your D-pad on PC. There will be controls that will, you know, change subjectively depending on what it is. Um, so play with the tanks. Uh, if you're on the, you know, Americans or Allies, if you're a level 1 tank, you're more than certainly going to die almost 100% of the time. So if you want to level up your tank without actually having to drive it, or if you're not even all that good at driving it, uh, same thing with the planes. Just exit them. And play with the soldiers themselves. Give them a gun and let them run around and get kills. It will get XP for your tank squad, which will allow you to upgrade your tank, which will make it stronger, which will give you new tanks, new planes, all of that kind of stuff. So don't don't forget to play with them. And if you get frustrated, just step out and use your squad as a normal infantry squad. That is what I recommend. Okay, so now as you progress throughout the game, um, and you're going throughout the progression menu as you're learning, you know, as you're learning and you're obtaining new items, you will never play somebody who is either much worse than you in this progression system. So if I'm level 38, 37, 39, I'm not going to play somebody who's level 1 in Normandy. It's more than likely just not going to happen unless the games are that, you know, like they really need people that much, but it's never going to happen. Um, so just, just keep that in mind. It's normally split up in sections of like 1 through 7, you know, 7 through like 13 or 14, and then 14 through, you know, 21 and then 20 you know and, and each campaign has a different level of progression some are only 30 like pacific some are 36 like tunisia um, some are 39 like normandy so it really is subjective based on that and as you play throughout the game you will notice that when you come up here to the top right you will see a whole bunch of things the first thing you'll notice is your statistics your statistics show you your kill-death ratio, the amount of battles you've been in. They also split it up per specific campaign. As you can see here, I've never even played Stalingrad. I only played a little bit of Pacific and a little bit of Moscow. So I still have some playing to do, but I have a lot of Normandy. Uh, and that will, you know, 
congregate across this. So as you're playing throughout the campaigns, you will get a player rating. A player rating is split up into a chart of 1 through 300. This is normally not so important. All this is is a self-reflection of how well you're doing in Enlisted. If you're getting an Enlisted in your first, second, third place almost every game and you're winning a lot of the time, then it's going to be reflected in this. And you could be a marshal well before you ever even beat the campaign. And it's just a personal reflection of how good you are and how many matches you're winning as a player. Player. Now this does reset seasonally, so I have 27 more days on my ranking system, but this does not affect my matchmaking. So when I go into a game, it will not matter if somebody else is a marshal or not. It doesn't even mean that they have fully maxed out their campaign. It's just a reflection of how good of a person they are, how many matches they're winning in a row, that kind of a thing, right? But it doesn't affect the matchmaking. The only thing that does is the progression system. As far as I'm concerned, there obviously is a little bit of skill-based matchmaking, but not to the extent. It's more around the progression system. So now that we've understood uh, a little bit more of the progression system, unlocking tanks, unlocking different tank squads, unlocking flamethrowers, squads I do want to cover one more thing um, with the squads you will you will originally get like with Moscow you will get these level one troops so with my sniper squad they are a level one sniper squad a level one assaulter squad a level one engineer squad and a level one rifleman squad even though it does say level four level six level three they are just level ones and i'll explain this as i go throughout the actual upgrade system of the perks real quick so now i'm going to introduce <laughs> introduce you into how to upgrade your soldiers uh after you have logistically um, progressed in the campaign some i would hold off on doing any of the perk selection stuff until you have upgraded your troops a little bit and i say this because you get better perks the more stars that you unlock Per troop and you unlock stars by using it's kind of like experience for soldiers so with this soldier here right I have a perk menu an available perk menu so these are all the perks that I can unlock for this soldier right and 8 being firearm reload speed right 16 being horizontal recoil and these are all grayed out because I don't have the points that I need in order to unlock them so even if I came here and I clicked earn a new point right up at the top they're all eight out of eight max that is because and I'll just randomly here let's see uh, I'll pick the run speed because I want my soldier to be a little quicker right so if I upgrade my soldier here once you have played through your soldiers a little bit unlock them you could unlock and you could get here higher ranks for your soldiers and so the max being five so if I come back over to my soldier and I've waited some time and I've now upgraded level five on all of my soldiers and I've waited so like you see here I have level zero stars and I wait till there's five empty stars and then I come back over here the potential for me getting these high ranking perks vitality sprint speed weapon aim healing bonuses all of that stuff goes up exponentially okay so now you have to understand that this is just a rifleman one so I could have I could fully upgrade this entire squad have guys to the brim loaded out and it's a rifleman squad I could have my level B let me go back to Normandy and I'll show you for example and this is where it gets a little bit complicated um, on the progression side of things so here I have a, let me see, a level one infantry. So if I drag this over here, it is a difficult to tell actually. So these guys are level two infantrymen. So now I would have to completely, and let me go to the upgrade system. I would have to completely, uh, even though you've already upgraded all of your riflemen, right? You've had this page fully upgraded. This is a completely new squad in the progression tab, right? It is riflemen two. So you have to fully upgrade a whole new squad if you want to use that. So keep that in mind when playing this game. 
some of the squad progression you want to have thought out before you even do anything. Some of the guns you get later on, and, and to upgrade those guns, you need to upgrade the later squads. So do you want to spend a lot of time upgrading all of the level 1 squads just for you to get better squads later on? Or do you want to upgrade those squads, you know, or do you want to upgrade all of your level 1 squads? And then by the time that you get those level 2 or 3s, you could just use the weapons from them and then keep your fully upgraded squads that you had spent so much time upgrading. Because there are three different tiers to the soldier categories, level 1, level 2, and level 3. Not all of them will be level 3. For example, uh, pot, like for the flamethrowers, there's only level 1 and level 2. There is no level 3. That means you cannot get a third flamethrower squad, at least on Normandy. There are only two. But there are three riflemen squad. There are three anti-tank squads. And so there are a number of different tiers to each squad. So, for example... My level 1 flamethrower squad here, fully upgraded, but my level 2 one is not fully upgraded. So now, even though I'm completely almost done with the campaign, I still have to spend a lot of time upgrading my level 2 flamethrowers. Just because later on, you get more than one squad. So you have to think about these things a little bit ahead of time um, when, when playing with this. Uh, okay, so now that we've understood under upgrading squads a little bit and upgrading weaponry, and weaponry is going to be the same way, you're just going to, well, this one isn't going to have it because it's a flamethrower squad, but if you have, like, the bar, for example, right, and each squad is going to be different, so like I was saying, the Rifleman 2s, so after I unlock the Rifleman 2s, I'll get the M1 carbine with grenade thrower, so I could upgrade that rifle, I could choose to, or I could choose to not. And so, for example, I did not upgrade my Rifleman 2 squad even a little bit. I didn't upgrade my Rifleman 2 or my Assaulter 2s. Um, but I have upgraded my Assaulter 3s a little bit more. And so, like, you could see and play around with different things. Like, here's my Machine Gunner squad. And you could upgrade the different weapons associated. Now, this is up to you and how you want to play. Again, wrapping back, it's all subjective to your squad setup. Alrighty. Okay, so aside from all of this stuff and going back to your player rating, up here you'll see medals, wallpapers, posters, achievements, and more. If you play the game, you will get achievements. These will give you weapon orders. What do weapon orders do? Well, you need these to buy new weapons whenever you progress through the game. So going back to squads, you'll see up here at the top, I have order for troops, order for weaponry, and uh, obviously your enlisted gold if you paid for that. And then, you know, weapon upgrade changes over time. So with weapon, with weapon upgrades, if I go to the shop here, let's say that <clears throat> I wanted to buy that M1 Grand that we were talking about earlier. It is we're going to require one silver coin to buy this rifle. It will not be free. I cannot get weapons for free. And some cost a little more than others. C2, 3, 3, and 3. Sometimes 2. And the same thing applies for equipment. These ones are bronze. These ones are silver. These ones are bronze. And these ones are silver. So depending on the equipment, it does depend on the level of weapon orders you get. Now, you do get these every time you finish a game, so do not worry. You also get them for completing certain achievements in the game. You will get free weapon slots, so do not worry about having uh, logistic points when it comes to the shop. You will earn them over time. Same thing with the weekly tasks. You will get free points for playing the game uh, that way. Now, one last thing I do want to go over finishing the guide now i know i didn't it's not a necessarily a complete advanced guide and i will up one upload one later on in the future but i do want to go over custom games what is custom games well you need to be level three in order to do them on the main menu of enlisted you could come here and you can see people playing custom games right uh okay well that's pretty cool so what if i wanted to play with just my buddies i can so the best way to do this is you could either set it on all, so it's cross-platform, or consoles only, depending on if that's how you're playing it. You could set your regions here, 
You could set your armies to just be, so if I was doing Normandy and I wanted to face my friends or anybody for that example, and I just wanted to play on Normandy, allies versus Axis, I could set it that way. Or if I wanted to make it so that way anybody from any campaign can play me on any map, I could set it to mixed. And when I do that, I could come here and I could select all the campaigns. So that way, if my buddy plays on Moscow and I play on Normandy and he prefers Moscow, we could play together. And then after that, I'm going to come to my missions. I'm going to click my maps, any map I want. Click check mark on it. Click the check mark. Click create game. And here, players can join your game. You're going to tell them to go to the custom game menu and look for your name as the creator. Then you could start the game. Pretty straightforward not very difficult. I hope this helps as far as understanding and listed, and I hope you do enjoy the game. It is pretty fun. I know it's newer. Uh, definitely give it a try and tell me what you think, and if the video is any good, subscribe, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you.